Hello guys, you're welcome back again to our practical series. Today we are going to continue by determining the acceleration due to gravity G using the simple pendulum. And to achieve that, I need a retort stand with a clamp firmly attached, a string, a pendulum bob, stopwatch, and a meter room. The procedure is pretty much simple. The string, well, I'm going to measure out 100 cm of the string from the center of the bulb to the point where it is firmly attached. Once that is done, I will oscillate it and count the oscillation down up until 20. And then I'll record the time to complete 20 oscillation. Now, for to avoid mistakes and error, I would have to repeat that same experiment for the same length to avoid any form of experimental error. So it means that I'm going to take note of the time twice and then find the mean for the time. And then I will go ahead to calculate the period and the period square for that same length. The same experiment will be done for different values of L at 80, 60, 40 and 20. I will also find the time and show you the theory as to how we can be able to get the acceleration due to gravity and then we'll see what we get at the end. So I'm going to go straight to the experiment, measure out 100 cm and oscillate for 20 times and then I'll get my time. So this is what I have, the simple pendulum. So you can see that it's firmly attached and I'm good to go. So here is the pendulum bulb already swinging. So I'm just going to give it a small amplitude and allow it to oscillate, but ensure that it doesn't touch any part. It doesn't make contact with any point. So this is the pendulum swinging. So when I feel I'm okay to start, I can now start my stop clock. So here is my stop clock. I can start at any given extreme. So let me start from the extreme from my right one. So the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So take note of the time. Now it has gone one oscillation already. So the time is going to be on the one in red. So it means that I'm going to count from um, the one in red. So I have 40, 40 point what? 40.7. 40.7, so that's 39, 40, 41, so 40.7. All right. So in order to be so sure, I'd have to repeat this experiment again to be so sure that it will give me something close to what I've just gotten. So I'm going to go ahead and oscillate again, and then I'll take my reading. So I'm going to start from my right extreme. So I'll go now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So you can see here that my time is at 41 on the dot. I can still go ahead and use it. It's not that bad. So I'll go ahead and reduce the length now to 80. And then one of the things that you are going to take note is that once I oscillate it, at a lesser length, the oscillation will be a little bit faster. So let me change the length from 100 to 80 cm now.
So at 80, I oscillate and I'm going to start as well from my right extreme. Let's now to measure my time. Let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So the time here is thirty six. 36.5 36.4 rather 36.4 so i'm going to go ahead and repeat the same thing for that same length so let's go again from the right one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen and twenty see exactly the same value i got this one is thirty six point five most exactly so in order to simplify it now I've done it up to 20 so I'm just going to do this last one and then I'll show you how my table is like so to oscillate this uh, length at 20 cm I'm going to have something like this you'll see that it is going to be much much faster and then we'll do the experiment quickly so here we go I give it a small amplitude and then I'll oscillate now i'm going to start from the um, right side one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty so this is what my time is see it there 18 point something i'm going to record that and repeat it again so to get my red reading for the last time i'm going to do one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen and twenty so you can see that is almost at the same point from the previous one although by 0.1 okay so this is how the the this is how the table looks like the table compiled with l the length of the string the first time t1 second time t2 and then the mean of the two times t t mean the period capital T, which is the mean divided by the number of oscillations, which is 20 for this experiment, and then the period squared, um, T squared, which is also there. So this is what the table gave me. Now, with this table, I plotted a graph of L against T squared. So if you plot a table of L against T squared, you're going to get a straight line graph that passed through the origin. And this is what mine gave me. So this is the graph of L in CM against T squared in sec second squared. It gave me a straight line graph through the origin, as you can see. Now, if I deduce the slope of this graph, I could use it now to now de uh, calculate or determine the acceleration due to gravity, which is our focus. So let me calculate the slope and use it and deduce the acceleration due to gravity. So here is what the slope looks like. The slope that tells us about the, the, uh, the ratio of the change in L over change in T squared gave us 
24.07 centimeters per second squared. Now, if I convert it to meter per second squared, it's going to give me it's going to give me 0 0.2407 meter per second squared. So here is the theory. Since we know that the length L of the thread is um, related to the period by this particular equation, T is equal to 2 pi square root of L over G. We've done this in our previous uh, videos. You can make reference to them. So if I square both sides, I'm going to have T squared is equal to 4 pi squared L over G. Making G subject formula, I will get 4 pi squared L over T squared. And since L over T squared is my slope, so if I use the value of my slope, I will now get G is equal to 4 pi squared times my slope. And that gave me 9.502. Recall that the actual value for the acceleration due to gravity is 9.87, which we approximate to 10. So I believe that the difference in my value from the original could arise from my experiment. So I could say that this is an experimental error that made me not to get um, exactly the same value or as a result of my latitude. We're going to talk about that in our next video. I believe that this has been of help to you. As always, please do click the subscribe button so that you can get more feeds from us. Stay tuned.